Hello and welcome to the Aaron Schwartz channel. Today, I'm gonna show you the Solo Stove. I was given this by my sister and her boyfriend for Christmas and it's a really cool thing. This is pretty nifty. Made for all experiences. Here you can see people making s'mores. S'mores is graham cracker with a piece of chocolate and a marshmallow. You put the marshmallows on a fireproof stick or metal thing like this, hold it over the flames, and then you can enjoy fire up s'mores night anytime on a tabletop flame, okay? that's what they're depicting and they even show small pieces of uh, lumber or dried wood that can be used in, in the stove. This is called a solar stove mesa and what we have here at the top is called the flame ring number one. Number two is a high heat ceramic coating applied to the outside that comes in different colors. Number three is a pellet adapter that's this cone shaped device on the interior. Number four is a 360 degree airflow there's holes drilled all around the base and the top to allow air to flow through. Then there's the stand that goes underneath. It has a height of 6.8 inches or 17.27 centimeters, has a diameter of 5.125 inches or 13.02 centimeters, weighs 603 grams and is made of 304 and 430 stainless steel, and then it can use twigs or wood pellets. Okay, here's the different, here's what it looks like in stainless steel. It comes in stainless, bone, deep olive, mulberry, ash, or water colored. It's easy to use, low smoke, and dual fuel like that. Oh, you can also follow this QR code right here if you want to see it in action. Okay, so here's the unit itself and you can see the design. So there's lots of holes down here to let the air in, bottom, all the way around, 360. And then these holes on the inner edge up at the top allow the air to flow. And there's a grid of wire at the bottom, and then ash drops to the bottom, okay? And then this is the pellet adapter, like this. And what this does is it allows you to put a fire starter in the middle. And I use these little votive candles. Now, I pull the plastic off of the candle by smacking the candle with a hammer until it releases. I don't burn the plastic. I just drop candle in here. And then I use a small amount of twigs stuck through the holes. I'll show you that in a second to get it going. And then what this allows is once you set this up and you stick the twigs in here like this, you light it and then I'm using pellets. Now this is what the pellets look like, okay? And if I show you, these are hickory blend of hickory and oak. Okay, these are the brand, Oklahoma Joe's. Now they, they can be used in smokers, but they seem to burn well. And today, we're gonna use a gram scale to quantify. Now I wanna point something out. This started out shiny, and it's taken on beautiful colors. When steel is heated in air, the oxides can form these beautiful colors. So this is iron oxide on stainless, and these oxides can produce a range of colors like this. And this sits at the top like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out wood, the wax, and the pellets, and see how long it'll run for. Let's get started. Okay, firstly, I'm using a piece of one by two like this and what I do is I take a knife and I put it on the edge of the wood like this and then I use a mallet and, ha and hammer it down like that and flake off pieces of kindling to get it started. One of the other things you can do if the piece is too wide to fit through the holes is you can take a knife like this and center it and just tap 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 like that and you can split a small piece like this into a couple smaller pieces. This is the base. It actually folds up like this. And it ships inside the unit like that. But then it actually folds and locks open on all four sides. So the rubber goes down onto a flat surface. Itself gets placed like that. So we're gonna turn the scale on like this. And then we're gonna measure that that wax block weighs 13.5 gram. Those pieces of wood are 5.3 grams. This is half a cup of these hickory and oak pellets. 162.4, but we have to subtract 81.5. So I've got small twigs like this. I'm actually starting this by breaking these twigs and sticking them into the top of this. Um, for the smallest ones, I actually stick through the side holes like this, and I drop this one down here. The idea is that you can create a little grid of wood to get the fire started. All right, so I'm gonna put the candle down here like this, then I'm gonna use my cigar lighter like this to start the... Okay, and then once the candle gets going, I'm gonna drop this basket with the wood on top of here. 
and the flame is gonna start setting that umber on fire. And usually I get one piece going good like this. Okay, and then while that's running, I'm gonna grab some of these pellets. And we're gonna pour the pellets in here while that fire is starting in the middle with the goal of getting the pellets all around the outside. Now I'm starting this at 57 after the hour here. That's a, a whole cup worth, or two, two of those units. And we're gonna go ahead and top it off like that. We'll move some of them out of the middle, get that fire going. All right. It smokes a lot at first when it's starting. That's normal. You can take a lighter and, and help it get going. Concentrate your flame towards the middle. What, what you want to do is, if it starts to smoke a lot, hit it with the flame. The smoke's going to turn into f fire because the particles from the smoke are flammable. I found that I have to help it a little bit to get going. And once you start to, to get get it going, you pop that ring on there. And I, I add a little bit more flaked wood. And you just hold it in here like this until it lights. And what you're trying to do is get a thermal updraft going. Like this. All right, now you can see the flame starting to create a good thermal updraft. So it, it does smoke quite a bit at first, although you can see the flame trying to propagate up the smoke. One of the things, if it's smoking wise, you can just hit it with a flame like this. That's wood smoke is flammable. Now this is not ideal, but if you wanna perform useful work cooking or something, you could put an apparatus over it like this that allows you to mount a pot or a pan. This is all cast iron here. This is fireproof. Um, I do this for, you could put a walk in here. What you want to do is give a gap about yay high. So this isn't perfectly correct, but something that creates a gap between the fire and the, the bottom of your pan. And once this thing get, gets ripping, it'll actually make flames as high as the top of this thing up here. Um, it'll go through the grate up there um, as, it, as it gains more updraft effect. It'll start gasifying the pellets and then we'll see that. You'll hear it make funny noises sometimes when there's vapor channels like, like and um, it takes about five minutes to ramp up and then seems to run for around 10 minutes. You can continue adding wood pellets to it while it operates, but we're doing a test with a little over a cup and a half or three units like we measured of these wood pellets to see and quantify its fuel consumption. I didn't get a very vigorous start this time, so it's taking forever to warm up, but once the steel warms up, you'll start to see smoke forming around the wood pellets. If we zoom in here like this, you'll see this, this gray smoke forming around the pellets. It tends to form a feedback loop, but um, I think I started a little cold. I usually use a small amount more wood and get a more vigorous fire going in the middle. Interestingly, this is the least amount of smoke that I've been able to get out of the unit. Um, in the past, I've got a bellow smoke. So this is a very clean burn mode. You can see the soft flames just moving around the pellets there. I think in the past, I fed it about three times more little pieces of wood kindling. Okay, so after a very slow start of over 12 minutes, the flames are starting to increase in height. Then if I get down here like this, you can see the flame is starting to gasify the... It's getting hot enough to gasify the wood pellets. We can use this as a size comparison. So if we get out here like this, the flame will keep growing in height. And as it increases in intensity, the fuel consumption rate increases. This is my fourth time running it, and I know that a full container, which this is not, maybe if I added another two units or half cups of the pellets, 
um, it would fill up to the inner hole level and um, that was I was getting like 10 minutes at full blast with flames up to the top of here which is about a foot and a half off the ground up there um, so you know at a minimum you could be using this for like heating water to make tea or coffee even at this low output you just put a small pot in here you can put your hands over here it's real hot at the top um, and this is kind of like in the flame is where you'd want to put your your vessel for heating or cooking now we can see the flame starting to engage the air jets around the side this is when the thermal performance of this thing starts to really crank it's kind of a beautiful flame effect too looks like some of that wax is burning now we can see the fire coming from below so that's now it's gonna now it's gonna start going See what I mean? Like, look how, look how tall those flames are getting. The wind is blowing it out, but if it's, you can see the flames are starting to poke through the top now. And um, this is the full power output now, probably around three or four kilowatts. I haven't measured. So look at the full flow pattern there. You can see like this. Now I'm gonna add one more unit of fuel to it. So once it's hot like this, you can just dump another load of fuel in here. Now the flame will, will go down, but if you take a close look at the mix, now we got the gasification hacked real hot. So those fresh mixed uh, hickory wood oak um, pellets are starting to off gas wood gas. And then um, it takes a second, but then it'll throttle back up. And I'd say for cook time, we're measuring, but you probably on two cups of pellets um, or maybe 400 grams, 350 to 400 grams, you're gonna get somewhere between like eight and 15 minutes of this full output. This is known as combustion. So carbon from the wood combines with oxygen from the air to form carbon dioxide. Though the combustion is incomplete, so some carbon monoxide and oxides of nitrogen also form. Though this is a very clean burning flame and when I get it really hot, um, I've noticed the flame near the uh, air jets or air holes in the inside actually turns blue. The hotter the flame, the bluer the flame color. So orange is a dull flame and blue or clear is a very hot flame. Imagine it depends on the kind of wood you're burning. It's really cranking. I mean, you can see it's, it's going well through the, you can see some soot forming at the top there. So the flames when they get this high, I think, I think the wax is really contributing to that. It's a nice fire starter, convenient and cheap. Boy, does that thing throw out heat, man. All right, it's starting to throttle down a little bit now. We see them way in here, we can see the core really clean, clean burn when it's not at full blast. Those air holes are creating those lines in the flame too as they feed fresh air, gets sucked in the bottom. Since heat rises, it pulls the air up the side and then into the holes. Um, and the outside, it gets hot. It's just not nearly as hot as the flame temperature, which is the reason we've got blue and purple and sit and um, kind of like pale yellow happening on that stainless steel ring. Um, so this is um, run number four. And that was about um, 10 minutes at full blast. Now we're at about medium output. It took more than 10 minutes to get going. A slow start today on this run, but uh, you can also see some asymmetry form towards the end too. Like half the stack will burn out while there's still fuel on the other stack. And if we get a good view in there, you can see the ash embers forming. It burns very cleanly um, all the way down to ash. So these wood pellets are very clean burn. They burn almost completely. There's only a tiny amount of ash left over at the end. All right, when it runs out, you're left with this. It's still throwing out, if you put your hand above here, it's still throwing out a lot of heat from these coals. I mean, you could still cook something like a marshmallow over this, probably for a few more minutes. And that stack will burn like this for quite a while. In fact, you're gonna wanna keep an eye on this. There's a, there's actually a little flame activity happening in there, but you wanna keep an eye on this until it burns out completely for a couple of hours. Don't leave this unattended. You could still burn your hand. This thing's searing hot. So be very careful if you have small children playing with this after it's been run. I'd suggest, I haven't measured, but the surface temperatures look like they're getting up to 700 centigrade, uh, maybe like a thousand Fahrenheit. Otherwise we wouldn't get these beautiful colors happening on the stainless ring. Um, the outside of the body near the base is like around 170. I can tell from brewing tea and coffee. Um, towards the top, I can't touch. It's probably three or 400 Fahrenheit. So something like that. Um, combustion's hot. 
Now that depends on your fuel type too, but um, this will stay warm for quite a while if you want to throw something on there just to keep it warm. All right, one final thought. Um, see how sooty my hands are like this? Uh, you're gonna want to wash your hands when you're done with this. Obviously your camping is not important, but I'm doing this on our back patio. You, you don't want to touch a bunch of stuff, otherwise you'll, you'll transfer that carbon.